Hello, my name is Peter and what you are listening to is Cyclope and Cyclope is a new synthesizer from Dorsum, which is me. And the best of the synthesizer is it's free. And in today's video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough so that you have a good start and know how everything works. So let's get started. The first thing you would like to tell Cyclope is what kind of MIDI controller you use. So in my case, it's an Osmos or a Seaboard, but you can simply click here and have a couple of choices. So for example, if you have a normal um, MIDI keyboard with, with a mod wheel, then just choose MIDI. If you have the X key, well, choose it. Simply pick the one that fits best uh, to your needs. To the right, you can see a, a lot of presets. You can simply uh, choose one by clicking on them. And sometimes you would like to have a little bit more of a um, selection. So you can go to the browse tab by clicking here or by clicking there. And then you can say, oh, for example, I'm interested only in bass sounds and I would like to have them a little bit dark, dirty and well, and then you can choose from here. But let's say you want to make your own sound and this is where it's going to be funny, right? So let's start with the init just by clicking here. And what it is going to sound like is very boring. Well, it's a sine wave, not that exciting, but we use it as a starting point. And let's see how much it takes to make something more interesting. The first thing that you have noticed probably is the beautiful eye of or called iris um, in Cyclope. And you can use any sample, drag and drop it to the iris, and you can choose which algorithm you want to use. I choose the version two. And now my sample got imported and resynthesized. And this is how it sounds now. Okay, and now that we have it, you see here are these playful dials and I can use them in order to change how my sample sounds. So let's try a simple, simply a little bit. Uh -oh. Crunchy. Of course you can combine all of them. I just want to give a little bit of an overview that there's some weird stuff that you can do here. And, and depending on how you want to how you want to shape the sound further, you can simply pick whatever you like and you can use any kind of uh, combination and well, actually it is here also to explore what are the possibilities. You start with this one sample and right now you can bend it in all kinds of different directions. And I have to say that one, from the very beginning, I like that. So let's go with that and see what we can do with it. Um, maybe we can make it a bit softer. And then you see there's a playhead moving here and normally with a sample that's a fixed thing. Here it is controlled with this LFO and what I want to do is slow it down. Ah. Not really beautiful now, <laughs> but at least a good starting point, at least interesting. Let's, let's call it interesting, not beautiful. Um, so what else can we do? We can add modules in the section. So I choose the filter section and you see there's no filter. Damn, Peter, what did you do? You call it filter section and there's, there's no filter. I oh, know. Actually, you can add one and you can quite flexibly create your own kind of whatever filter you would like to have. So for example, right now, I just go for standard low pass. It's a bit boring, but well, I think for this one, it's going to be exactly what I need. Maybe we can take a dirty one, crank up the resonance a bit. Ah, 
I, I like that. The only thing is, I, I don't want to move that cutoff slider always with my mouse. I would be crazy at doing it. So what can we do? Of course, uh, we can, for example, assign an LFO. And how does it work here? Actually, it's quite simple. We have three LFOs here. That one is already used to move the playhead. So let's choose another one. Well, that has a sine wave, doesn't look that bad. Maybe we can start with it. And what I do right now is I say, well, select this knob. So you see it is marked. And then I say, well, let's have it modulated by LFO2. And here I can choose the death. If, if I put it to full, then now LF2, LFO2 is going to have a full impact on, on that cutoff. But I can reduce it also here, and then it has a yeah, smaller one. Or I can put it in that direction, it's negative. Which doesn't make such a big difference if I have a sine wave. Okay. So here we have something. But it would be nice if I can also, here I have a... Uh, a keyboard with aftertouch. It would be nice if it also responds a little bit to that to the aftertouch. So I will assign another modulation by saying, okay, my pressure should also influence. influence it. So now I can play the cutoff. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, and of course you can right now spend hours in trying to make it really beautiful and behave exactly like like you want, but that would be boring if I do it right now. So let's see what else can we do. For example, mm, sweet sounds good. So what does it do? I like that. And maybe we can increase the beams a little bit. Not too bad. Okay, and then we can go into the FX section. And again, well, it's empty, but that shouldn't let us down. And here I have, a, of course, a different selection of things that I can add. And maybe we can add a little bit of grain, grain stuff, granular. I'm just playing around. Maybe also a little bit of spacey reverb and a phaser. Oh yeah, it is still <laughs> very noisy. And probably I would like to refine it at least a little bit. But I think you see where this is going and how you can deal with it. Um, just as a reminder, we started with a sine wave. We imported one sample. And this is where we started. And by the way, you have undo and redo. So this is where we ended up after one minute, which is quite different. And that's the point. It is so easy because you can throw whatever sample you have onto Cyclope and then you can tweak it, bend it, twist it in any direction that you would like to have and you will get something out of it which is musically useful, which is playable with expression on, on your keyboard in virtually no time. So forget about presets. Well, there are very good presets coming with it from really genius uh, sound designers, but you don't need to. You can make your own. And it's so simple. Give it a try. Okay, let's try something different. What I'm doing now is to import um, a drum loop. This is how it sounds. Maybe you can turn it up a little bit. Yeah, okay, so what can we do with it? That's not really sounding like an instrument. So. In the oscillator section, which works also like the filter section, what we can do is, for example, add a resonator. 
the resonator can be set to track. So right now the resonant frequency will follow whatever pitch I play on my controller. And then it's nicer that I have a couple of things that I can choose from. So I will try anything. Ooh, that sounds beautiful already, right? I can change the inharmonicity so I can make it more inharmonic. If I like. I can decrease the resonance if I want to have it a little bit less, less uh, long decaying. I can change the pitch, but let's leave it like that. I actually like that. And again, we can add a bit of uh, effects here. So maybe a shimmer. Maybe that was a little bit too much. <laughs> ah, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> so, so no shimmer. Okay, again, maybe we try it in a different direction. <laughs> what I can do here is I can use this also as a step sequencer. If instead of using the left mouse button, I use the right mouse button. So let's... Yeah, and now hours later, <laughs> I would like to give it a little bit more crunch. So I'm adding the orbit module. and maybe an OTT to make it a little bit more pronounced. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and again, <laughs> In order to make that a full-blown, super cool preset, you would need to invest a little bit more of time, but you see, it is so easy. That was a drum loop. And now we have a fantastic sounding, rich, organic loop that is playable in harmonies and melodies via my controller. That's great, isn't it? Okay, let's do one more. So I start again with a sample and not very fancy thing. Maybe we can adjust the ADSR a little bit. And what I would like to show you is here is also an arpeggiator section. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel um, because all of these sections, they have some kind of predefined settings. And of course, you can make any kind of setting for such a section and then save it so that you can reuse it later. I'm playing hold one finger. <laughs> and now that we have that, we can start making something with it. Again, it is so easy and so simple to 
to get to something that you can start using that gives you some inspiration that you can use in order to start a track or to fill anything in the track that you're working on. And that's the point about the entire synthesizer. It makes your life so easy and simple and you have so many nice tools and everything is designed so that the pieces fit together and you will always almost always get something out of it which is immediately usable. If you're interested, why don't you just join our Discord, which is called Dorsum Village, and it's a very nice community. We, we name ourselves the friendly and supportive community, 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 community for um, sound lovers, and that's actually what it is. So if you are, if you want to go there just to have a chat, or because you have a question or you want to share what you have done with Cyclop, you are really welcome. Just join us there and we can have a conversation. Um, probably there would have been 20 more things that I wanted to tell you, but I have forgotten. So, hey, I hope you will have a lot of fun with it. Go to our website, download it, and it's yours. Have a good time. Bye.